What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and I've got my good friends Chris and Stacy Taylor from Financial Prepper are here today. Chris, Stacy, how are you guys doing today? Go We're ahead. Good. We're good. Ladies first. We are good. It has been an awesome weekend. It is hot here, actually. It's like 65 degrees during the daytime. So we have a chance to get something done before the cold weather gets here. So it's been great around here. It has been miserable cold up here in Pennsylvania. But that's not what we're talking about today. I want to talk about the shiny. And silver in particular, my favorite of the shinies, because I heard a rumor. It's been a few, few weeks since I bought any metal. But I heard a rumor that premiums were coming down. And Stacy, I know you in particular, you deal in this space an awful lot on a day-to-day -day basis. So I said, all right, we got to get Chris and Stacy on. The first time interviewing two people side by side. So this is a little new. All right, guys, what is going on in the metal space? Is it true? Are premiums coming down? Premiums are way coming down. Um, and matter of fact, I ran some stats today. I looked at some charts. I looked at our premium pricelet starting, starting back in February, just to kind of give a year round. And premiums at the beginning of the year were pretty low. And then it's very interesting. Spot started to spike around April. Premiums didn't catch up, though, for a month or two later. And then premiums went through the roof. And so I'm just going to take evil, um, Eagle, Eagle for an example and just say, yeah, the Evil Eagle. And then just say uh, it went around 17, 75, I think was the max. And we're all the way back down to I think it's like 12 bucks now. So, yeah, definitely premiums have gone way down. Availability has gone way up. Wow. So when you say 1775, that was the premium that was, on that an was ASC? The premium. On top of Good God. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> wow. On top of Okay. Spot. So so premium was 1775. Spot was somewhere around 18. All right. And then so what's happened now? We got spot has run up a little bit. We've gone from yep. 18, 19 bucks. Now we're trading around 23, pushing 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet the premiums come down by five bucks. So the price yep. of that ASE, it hasn't really moved, has it? I even looked at the ratio because you remember they used to say the gold to silver ratio was like 85 and an 80. We're looking around 76 right now is the ratio, gold to silver. Okay. So that's yep. that's a little more towards the normal side of things. But even by the last couple of years standard, that's still probably a little bit high, the gold to silver it is. ratio. It is. So still, yep. still room to run for silver. But as the price has risen, this uh, clamoring for the physical metal, I guess, has it slowed down, right? Because that's what drives the premium is the retail demand. Actually, my phone has not stopped. That's the interesting thing. So, and I looked it up typically in the summer premiums, um, when they, when sales slow down, premiums kind of normal, normalize 2022. That was not the, the case at all. It was through the roof phones ringing constantly, people buying first time buyers, like nothing you've ever seen. And then they would come back and buy second, third time. And then people that had bought before, but had kind of stopped, sat on the shelf. They weren't buying as much. They started picking back up the phone, visiting retailers, coin dealers, and buying again. So this summer was unlike, from what I can look at the charts, unlike a lot of summers. Because they say summers are typically slower. So what do you guys what do you that think was, was driving that? Do what? Speculate for me. We don't need, you know, give me a shot in the dark. Why do you think that was? Was it the price was just so much lower this summer, the spot price being down where it was? What, what do you think drove that additional demand? What, what when people Ooh, called you and they go. said, I want it, let's, you know, let's go. What ifs and speculate? We've got first time buyers of the newest sort, you know, the 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 very first time buyer that's buying a couple coins. I'll help you get into silver any way I can or gold or something to hedge your wealth. Uh, I recommend in every single video, scourge the earth for the best price. Yep. Yep. Find some silver somewhere else if it's cheaper than Stacy. Just give Stacy a chance because we have really competitive prices, and that's why I got into the space to begin with. But that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. People are, you know, retail investors are moving to sound money. Mm -hmm. There's only so much of it. I mean, me and Stacy don't have a pile of it back here that we're loading up in a bull to a track hoe and, and putting on a truck and sending <laughs> it to the man. I mean, we don't have, you know, there's only a billion ounces mine last year, this year, a bit, 1 billion ounces. Mm -hmm. The whole market cap is like $22 billion, $22 billion. It's tiny, small. So when the retail investors start wising up and they start moving, even these new ones, even, you know, two or three ounces, and I'm sure we're not the only brokers that this is happening to. So, you know, you're starting to get these smaller people starting to sell massive amounts of silver 
you know, what do you think is going to happen to the premiums? You know, there, people aren't going to just let their metals go for a little bit over spot. I wouldn't if it was me, you know. Well I'm going to interrupt you just a little bit then. Sorry. Um, but so I think that I know, here we go. This when you're a team, you I feel interrupt. like a couple's therapist here. Yeah, there you and go. Now, Chris, when how did right. that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm hearing. <laughs> here's what I'm hearing from people that call in and buy. I'm hearing one that they're scared of what's going on with their 401ks or their IRAs or their retirements or different things like that. They're watching the dollar drop. And if you know, if you look at the charts, when the dollar drops, you know, spot, I mean, the prices of precious metals tend to go up. Well, that's not always been the same this year, but we can talk about that later. But I looked at some charts earlier. So that's been one of the number one concerns. Two, they're worried about what's going on in the economy. They're worried about prices of everything. They're worried about what's going on globally. If you look right now, and I looked up this really interesting chart, and I was trying to find actually where it came from. I have to give the Yankee stacker credit for this one. He put it on one of his videos. But if you look at the global recession, it's never gone below zero. We're below zero. So I can't prove that, but that's what he showed on his video. And it was very interesting. So they're telling me all this. They're saying we've got recession going on. We've got the 401ks. We've got the dollar dropping. Um, what am I going to do? I went now to what to my 401k, my retirement. Even our neighbors across the street said it's gone down, down. So they're taking There's Even people that are in crypto have cashed out and they're turning around and putting into precious metals. Some are taken physically and they're vaulting at them themselves. Some are vaulting in private vaults. But that has been what I have personally seen, that everybody is running to precious metals because of that. The saddest part about the crypto thing is people are doing it at the bottom. They are. Well, we don't know if we're at the bottom of crypto. Don't get me wrong. You know, who knows with that Fugazi stuff. But when and I'm, I'm guilty, too. I didn't I didn't sell crypto at the top. Sure didn't. Uh, I wish I would have done it. Uh, I wish I'd have moved from the top into precious metals. But. We've got to remember to do that as we ride these waves. Mm -hmm. And it looks like because we're about to experience that with gold and silver. You know, I don't have a timeline. I cannot give you a date. And you're going to see a lot of people do 30 days and silver to the moon. You know, I don't have that. I don't have a crystal ball. But when silver and gold are mm -hmm. going literally, I mean, there's there's some speculation out there that gold could double overnight. And it could. We don't know. When that happens, there's going to be some people take profit. These people that are like us that are that are waiting and holding precious metals just to, to you know preserve their wealth, and then they have a little extra to speculate with. And when that happens, we have a portion that we're going to sell. And I want people to understand that. Uh, try to in this coming bull run, try to take advantage of it. Instead of like the people that held crypto and they watched it do this and come all the way back down and then trade it for gold and silver. Uh, and I'm not saying it won't go down more, but just try to keep that in mind. We do. Is, that's a, Can I give you one more stat too? Here's interesting. Please. I love charts because I watch your show a lot and you love charts and which I love. So if you go back and look at the charts of the gold and silver, if you notice back um, when a recession hits 2008, it dipped. And I forget, I have to go back and look at the price, but I went and actually looked at the price of what it dipped to. When we kind of came out of a recession, watched it spike. Turn around in 2020, went down. Same thing. Didn't go down as far, though. It spiked up. So now we're supposedly in a recession. Look what it's doing now. They say if you look at the charts based on the dip that we're in now, depends on how long the recession lasts. If it goes up like it does the chart based, we're looking at $100 ounce per silver. <laughs> that's what the chart says i cannot verify I love that it, it but does that, take it yeah sign me up i will not stand in your I way know, I, you know I, and i knew I you would like that because it is you gonna, like oh, yeah. chart. it's gonna happen but i like to hear it it's like i know yeah. you know i was buying silver when stacy was you know a little bit fresh and new to it yep, a long yep. time ago and now to hear my wife say hundred dollar silver is like yeah that's what i'm talking about it very very well could shoot way past that because people like to buy things that are going up Remember that people love to buy things that are going up. And, you know, Stacy, the, the scenario you just described with the sell off and the rebound, you know, when when you get a, a massive deleveraging event, when a great big pile of debt goes bad, like happened in 2008 and like would have happened in 2020 if the Fed hadn't fired off a bazooka full of QE. Um, but what happens is people sell not what they want to sell. They sell anything they can sell anything and everything they can sell when they get that margin call. And that's why the gold and the silver are going to get dragged down along with everything else. If we get another deleveraging event like that, which I think is going to happen. 
And that's why I've been saying for a while, I do think the, the bottom is probably a long way from here. Um, but it, I don't worry so much about that because the precious metals, that is the very base of Exeter's pyramid. That is the safest asset you can own. And that's what's going to rally first and hardest when we finally do find that bottom. And that's why I don't worry so much about trying to time the markets. Because I do think, Chris, your number is realistic. Uh, the $100 number for silver. Man, I'd love it. That's um, not my number. I just think it would be cool to hear. That was that. just the chart. because Just I like the number chart. that was thrown out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it no. sounds exciting. Yeah, well, You like know, you that. mentioned gold doubling, too. I mean, these aren't yeah, gold well, bugs that are saying that right now. We're talking about, like, Zoltan Pozar right now, who's yeah. one of the most respected economists in the world, just wrote a piece about how if this transition of from the euro, not the euro dollar, the petrodollar over mm-hmm. to this Russian oil for gold thing that has been rumored, if that happens, that gold would virtually double overnight if that think, happens. Think about how realistic that can be. One gram of gold for one barrel of oil. That is commodity for commodity. That is a store of wealth for energy. If you don't have energy, you've got nothing. You've got dead people, really. You've got to have energy. It is the lifeblood of any economy. Really, okay. diesel fuel is. But All right. So how much is a barrel of oil right now? I don't know, Oil's it? about okay. $70 a barrel right now. Okay. A 60, a, for a gram of gold, we're looking about 65 bucks. So there you go. Swap it out. Yeah, but... Think how they can manipulate the price. I know. But they, they could say, okay, well, a barrel of oil just went to such and such. Oh, well, that's two grams of gold. Well, the big thing about that gold for oil deal is now there's a lot of dollars overseas that aren't as useful as they were the day before that arrangement. So those dollars are going to leave the oil market, and they're going to oh. go somewhere else where they have mm-hmm. more utility, i.e. the United States. So all, that, all those dollars are going to start coming home, chasing goods and services here in the States. So... Maybe oil doesn't get more valuable necessarily relative to other currencies, but if the dollars all start coming back to the States, you better believe the dollar value of oil and gold are both going to go straight up. That is Triffin's like dilemma. That. We, we are living through Triffin's dilemma. I want everybody that's watching this to really understand and study that. That is a professor in the 1960s came out and he said, hey, we're screwed. This is going to happen. And now it's happening right now. <laughs> and we are right down the middle of it. So check out Triffin's Dilemma. Uh, you're exactly right. Well, I'll say one more thing, too, about the price. Everybody thinks the price right now is spiking on spot. But if you go back to April or actually February of this past year, just a few months ago, our spot for silver was 2346. Well, guess where we are right now? 2351. Our gold was 1849. Right now, we're at 1798. We're actually down on gold. So we just had a dip. So people right now are kind of going, oh, my goodness, we're spiking. We're spiking. But we're really not compared to what we were at the first of the year. So maybe that kind of puts things in perspective. And also when you look at premiums, premiums are way down, which helps offset. And and Chris, that was a, a, a really good thing about Triffin's dilemma there. I mean, I'm sure a, a better economist could probably describe it in more detail. But it's basically the dilemma of the U.S., has to run these never-ending large deficits in order to keep the supply of dollars growing. And if we stop, it's going to create a contractionary death spiral in overseas economies. But if we don't stop, the national debt is going to balloon to such proportions that inevitably there will be a debt crisis here in the United States. Uh, The United States has a moral obligation to provide liquidity for these other countries. And that's pretty much stopping right now. With these interest rates hiking and you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, quantitative tightening and all this stuff that's going on, and he said it. This is this is not going to work in the long term, and nobody cares because it works in the short term. You know, these people. It reminds me of people that are you know just living on credit cards for the moment. Just woo, max them out. Let's go. You know, I'm a boomer. I don't have to deal with this mess. The next generation will have to, and that's it's really the worst case. And I know we're getting close to the end of the show, so I'm going to go ahead and go back here and take this chuck key out of this lathe because I want to see how many people would stay till the end of the video. Because <laughs> you guys are going to tear me up about that. I have been in a machine shop where somebody started the lathe with the chuck key still in it. So if you take one thing away from this video, it's that the price of gold and silver is going higher eventually. If you take two things away from this video, the second should be... Get the key out of the lathe before you start that thing. <laughs> that is not pretty, man. Those things that come out funny. hard and fast. 
before we go, look, and we talk about gold and silver all the time, and I really believe uh, there's a need to have it in everybody's portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, the, the central banks do. You know, this is a big deal. When you say central banks, we're talking about the people. I did a video of the day like this, where they're controlling, mm -hmm. you know, the CCP controls thumbnail. the government that buys the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, central, the tops down approach. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that are holding the gold. And if you think, oh, well, we're just going to have a CBDC, you're not really getting the whole picture. You're not really, okay, if you're willing to do that, if you're willing just to accept what you're given, you know, you're working for a living, so you, you take what you're given because you're working for a living. That's not the way I live. Mm -hmm. I want to prosper through this. There's a, a massive uh, shift mm -hmm. that's coming from fiat currency back to hard money. And the sooner you are, the better off you'll be. And I am not saying we're at the bottom. Gold and silver could have, they could go in half from here. We could see eight and nine hundred dollar gold, but we don't know. But you do know it's not going to nothing. And you know for one hundred percent for sure, fiat currencies do not last forever. Global reserve currencies. 100% do not last forever. It has been proven over and over and over. If you're, you're extremely naive, if you, if you think the U S dollar is going to be the reserve currency for the rest of time. So just think through that and you don't have to buy gold. If you don't, you know, if you think you're going to throw it in the streets or it's worthless or some kind of scam or whatever, don't buy it. But I encourage you to buy oil or some other commodity or food or fill your propane tank up or do something that's hard and tangible instead of just holding currency that's going out the window. You, you're essentially have lost about 19, I don't know, 15 to 20 percent if you were just holding cash in a shoebox. Like I know a lot of people that are doing that. You know, I collect $500 a month and I stick it under my bed. Well, you are really screwing up because you're saving something that's going out of style. I'm just saying, I want to put that in the, in the video. I hope people made it. <laughs> he got fired up like you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. he didn't well, quite get rid of the face, but yeah, that's your veins are showing, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So real quick, besides subscribing to Financial Prepper, because these guys, their channel is fantastic. It's one of my favorites. Um, we're out there. We're checking for the price of gold and silver. We're trying to get the best price out there. I check a couple of websites. I see what they've got, but I want to check with you. How do I get in touch with you guys? How do I see? How do I give Stacy a chance to beat what Atmex is offering or what JM yeah. is offering? You can give me a call at 318-564-5823. Or you can ah, email you me at S-T-A-Y-L-O-R at milesfranklin.com. And I will provide prices. I will provide broker's license. You're welcome to confirm that I am who I am. And I will give you spot price and you're welcome to shop around. I've been on people. I've been with on the phone with people and I'm like, shop around. If I can't beat them, I don't it's blame mandatory. you for going with them. It's mandatory shop around. I yep. want you to get the best price. Yep. That's the bottom line. This isn't Stacey, how we make our living. This isn't our, our, you know, this is, this is a space I want to be involved in going into the Thunderdome. Yeah. And look with the CBDC, if you're okay with the government deciding when you've had enough gas and when your kids have had enough to eat and they turn off your money afterwards, if you're okay with that, don't hold any precious metals. Don't hold any cryptocurrency or any Bitcoin. Just go ahead and, and embrace their CBDC and hope they give you enough. And if you're not okay with that, hold some metal and hold some Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's uh, what it comes down to. I love the sarcasm. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean it's so is that passive aggressive enough for you? If you feel that that's okay, I guess I can't stop you. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Do what you do what you know. Do what you think. Really, if you think it's a scam, don't do it. By all means, do something else. Do something doing nothing is not an option. Sure. All right, Stacy, you're going to make sure Chris emails me that number and that email address as soon as we're done here. So I can correctly copy and paste it into the description down below so they can get in touch with you guys and remember to subscribe to their channel. Guys, I'll give you the last word. Yeah. All right, guys, what I want you to do right now is to have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you in the next one later. I love that send off.